All righty. Welcome back to another episode of Two Plane Sports. Today, we are talking about Jaden Rashada at Florida, you know, requested his official release uh, from his national letter of intent. And what are the implications to Florida and what do they do next at the quarterback position? And so before we get into it, I just want to say we appreciate it uh, for everyone that's been watching, like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn the notification bell on uh, just so you know, whenever we post every video, uh, we will be posting more content um, as time is going on in January. So we're going to be pumping out a lot of good content. So you definitely want to stay around, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Apple, Spotify, and TikTok. Everything's linked in the description below. If you're listening to us on Apple or Spotify, be sure to leave us a review on there. It helps us out a lot. And our Twitter and Instagram have been doing really well. A lot of good stuff on there. So go follow us on there. All right. So Jaden Rashada, this has been a saga going on for for a long time. There was a little hesitancy with Jaden Rashada, even initially signing his national letter of intent to Florida. Uh, he finally did. And obviously, if you're watching this video, you most likely have heard um, a lot of the backstory as far as, you know, the numbers that are be thrown around, whether they're true or not. I question if the dollar amount is really realistic for a high school kid but it might be and obviously there was some money involved and he has since changed his mind um as of tuesday evening on the 17th uh, rashada has officially requested a release from his national letter of intent florida has up to 30 days to respond according to the rules that are set by the national letter of intent in the ncaa so he we this is not going to probably end anytime soon. What do you think about the implications of Rashada requesting his release? Um, obviously, he was once close to going to Miami. Um, and obviously, at one point, he was really close to going to Oklahoma if you go way back. What do you think? Well, it's pretty insane. I think we can all agree this is a crazy situation when that doesn't really happen often. Um if you want to compare it to like a pro situation, let's like Eli Manning saying that he's not gonna play for who was it the chargers when they could have picked him and they ended up taking philip rivers since he wasn't going to pick he wasn't going to play for them kind of similar situation but in a college context seems like it really is nil and florida just didn't put up the money whatever the issue is um now Jaden is looking for a way out he's not going to be an early enrollee i think that's kind of a fair thing to say at this point unless florida decides to be really really nice and just release him tomorrow so that he can commit, sign the letter, get the financial aid stuff figured out, and roll into whatever school it would be to take them. Um, you know, there's plenty of places that are going to want that that quarterback services. First one that came to mind to me was AM. Um, I know when we were talking about it before we started recording, they signed a quarterback, but Jaden Rashada is talented, highly touted quarterback. It wouldn't be the first time that AM takes more than they really need at one position you know 2022 they took like seven or eight offensive li defensive linemen um and they already had pretty de talented defensive line so they you could see them taking on another quarterback um then you've got kenny dillingham at asu he's a guy that was recruiting him hard when he was at oregon asu is definitely down and getting a guy like Jaden rashada could probably help them a lot in recruiting for the next class finishing 2023 for any of those guys that haven't signed and hope and you know i'm sure his hope is to try to get a quarterback like that so that his offense can look like it did in oregon rather than having to try to build it slowly um because if you've seen anything from kenny dillingham as asu's head coach he's very passionate about trying to make asu a legitimate contender for the pac-12 we'll see how long that takes or if he can do it but it's going to be going to be a long ride. I think you, you nailed that. It's not something that we're probably going to hear a resolution to in the month of January. And if it is, then that means Florida found a replacement. Um, you know, Walker Howard seems, seems like that's a guy that his name is out there as a potential guy to replace Jaden Rashada. Uh, Walker was top 10 quarterback in last year's class was at LSU and the transfer portal now. So, I mean, it's really going to be, does Florida have any shot at trying to get back Jaden Rashada's, um, I guess, services, his commitment to the team or to the school? To me, that seems unlikely at this point. I don't know how much even the school would want to revisit that because of how much it, this is 
I guess, distracted from what's probably important in the rest of the class and the football program and actually getting some a good product out on the field. But it's also going to be a long ride for Jaden because now I'm sure this is something that schools are going to have to worry about. Like we have to get this kid to enroll as soon as he signs that piece of paper or he might not come. No, that's, I mean, that is the truth. And I, that's, that's a good topic I wanted to mention is I certainly hope this isn't the road we're going to go down of we're going to be seeing a top player, you know, every year go down this where they're promised X amount of dollars and then someone backs out as soon as they put their name to paper. And that's not a great way to recruit players. And I'm sure there's more to it. I'm not going to speculate what it is, but naturally where I also think where he could end up going is Miami. I mean, Miami was the school that was the main competitor of Florida um, you look at Miami's class. I mean, obviously it's a top top four class right now. You know, number four pending Cormani McLean. Um, I mean, all they've got as far as the quarterback in this class is Emory Williams, who's a three star. So of course they're going to take a Jaden Rashada if if they can. But um, so Miami, obviously they've got some NIL money as well. I mean, they they did very well in this recruiting cycle. But you bring up Walker Howard. I mean. He does seem to be the the guy that they're wanting to get immediately. He can come in and compete to to play next year, um, but it seems like Walker is hes- is hesitant at Florida, or not maybe not quite as interested. I know Florida's recruiting him hard. TCU and Ole Miss are doing the same. They both have got visits. It's the it's at this point Walker Howard's got to make a decision soon. I mean, I know the. You know, we've been in college and, you know, the late enrollee or the deadline to enroll is is quickly approaching. I mean, you, you, you've you started the semester at this point. Uh, what do you have, like a week or two after the fact that you can join a class and not be too far behind? Granted, he could come in and be in some eight-week classes. I know Caleb Williams last year, I mean, he didn't transfer to like February. Um, so it could always be at a later date, but it just seems like that um, Florida is kind of on the outside looking in for him. and. I wouldn't be surprised if somehow Florida ends get, ends up getting Walker Howard. They probably go ahead and just release Jaden Rashad at that point if they could secure his services. And I just wonder if if Florida is going to end up, you know, trying to repair this if they if it's if at all possible. Uh, but it, it just doesn't seem like if he's officially requested, it seems like he's he's done and trying to leave. Well, and for all Florida fans, I think that you should probably want to try to get a guy like Walker Howard in the at the program as soon as possible because your quarterback situation is kind of shaky. It's not, you know, Anthony Richardson is elite and left for the draft. And I'm sure that there's someone there to back him up, but Walker Howard has experience at the college level. I know he didn't play. I don't think he played at all at LSU, but he at least knows what it takes to be a college quarterback, has seen it front of his eyes with Jaden Daniels uh, in front of him at LSU. And it would kind of secure, it would be, it would make the most sense for Walker as well. Cause if you go to TC or Old Miss, you're sitting behind either Jackson Dart at Ole Miss or Chandler Morris. Oh, was it Chandler Morris? That doesn't sound right. Um, the TCU's quarterback. I can't remember her, the, I'm yeah, pretty it's sure it is Chandler, Chandler Morris. Morris. It's yeah. Um, you'll be sitting behind Chandler. He was supposed to be the starter at the beginning of the year. And if it wasn't for an injury, who knows where TCU would have been with Chandler at the helm other than Max. But you're at least sitting for a year, which is what you're trying to get away from at LSU from outside looking in. Why not go to Florida? It might not be the ideal place to go, but Florida big school, big name. If you succeed there, you're going to be popular there for the rest of your life. And ILs, we're going to be just fine. And schools are going to, or college teams are going to have an eye on any quarterback that, that goes to Florida. I mean, look at Kyle Trask. It hasn't really turned out to be amazing, but he was pretty good in college. Anthony Richardson had not the greatest year, not the year that most people probably expected of him, but he wasn't terrible. Now could be a first round pick. Like, if you just perform well at a big school like a Florida, you're going to be in position to at least get drafted. Yeah, and and who could come in? I mean, yeah, obviously Walker Howard could come in and compete and play, but you're asking who's behind him. Well, Graham Mertz from Wisconsin ended up transferring to to a, a Florida, so 
they have a veteran guy, you know, last year he played in 22, he played in 21, he played in 2020, and he played a little bit in 2019, but that he didn't start in 2019. Um, so he's got a couple years of eligibility left. I believe he redshirted in 2019. 2020 doesn't obviously count. So I believe he has two years coming in to Florida. Um, but Walker Howard would be a guy that would be more long term, like a Jaden Rashada, um, you know, because Walker Howard redshirt, redshirted. So they'd have four years of eligibility. So Graham Mertz would be your immediate plug and play. But obviously, you would love to have Walker Howard come in and compete day one and potentially beat out Graham Mertz. Um, there's a reason why Mertz is leaving. He didn't have the the best year at Wisconsin. He ended up having a little over 2,100 yards, 19 touchdowns, 10 picks. So not horrible, not great. But at the end of the day, it was also Wisconsin. So you have to factor factor that into you know assessing his play. Um, he's not a very mobile quarterback. He's more of a pocket passer. So Florida's going from a guy like Anthony Richardson to a guy that like Graham Mertz that one was mobile one's not so it's something to consider and also I, I I think Florida's trying to get another like a guy like Walker Howard is to alleviate the um, concerns of like Aiden Mazel, who's committed the wide receiver you know the top wide receiver in this class I mean that that kid's got to be feeling like man I, I thought I was going to get a top top quarterback and to, and that's part of the reason why we're playing together is or I went to Florida is to play with a guy like Rashada and so I think they're trying to come in and be like well uh, it might not be Rashada but this kid is really good too so you know to to alleviate that yeah again it's going to be something that will be probably ongoing I really think he's he's I mean he's going to get some time off from school and just have to deal with this and continue training at football because Pretty sure as an early enrollee, that means he officially left high school. That, and that was his plan. He left high school. Don't think he can go back to that place. Um, I'm pretty sure the school would, would just not tell him to turn around and go back home. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really, it's a really odd um, situation that really doesn't normally arise. I mean, it's normally maybe one, one every other year. It seems like we have this issue at one school where some differences come out so um do you have any more final thoughts on Jaden rashada um obviously you mentioned a m maybe asu i'm thinking maybe miami those seem to be three viable options if he does get indeed released from florida or and when that exactly is i don't know it's tough it's a tough spot to be in and um something we're gonna have to watch closely yeah i would pick asu i think kenny dillingham is going to work his ass off to try to get that kid to to be a sun devil. Yeah, maybe so. I mean, beautiful weather. You can't can't complain about that. I mean, not that Gainesville wouldn't have good weather too because it is Florida. So, but anyway, so um, made it this far. We really appreciate it. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. We're going to be keep pumping out great SEC content, uh, breaking stories, covering different schools, Florida included. Um, so if you like this channel, Hit the subscribe button, turn the notification bell on, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Apple, Spotify, and TikTok. Everything's linked in the description below, and we'll catch you guys in the next video.